Okay, so I acknowledge I live and work on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and Métis people of Bawating in Northern Ontario. So Tansi, my name is Paulette Steves. <clears throat> I am an Indigenous Cree Métis archaeologist. My research is focused on Pleistocene archaeological sites in the Western Hemisphere of the Americas and on reclaiming Indigenous histories. In my research, I have created a database of hundreds of archaeological sites that predate 11 to 12,000 years before present. The existence of hundreds of ancestral sites in the Pleistocene creates a dialogue from which Indigenous people can challenge erasures of histories. It foregrounds their Indigenous identities and their links to the land and empowers them in seeking justice. I have also found that oral traditions discuss extinct species and some indigenous languages have terms that link to glacial events, terms such as when the ice went home. Archaeological sites linked to extinct species <clears throat> and events held in oral traditions carry histories from the Pleistocene to the present. Indigenous peoples' early histories on Turtle Island have been denied by archaeologists for over a century. Archaeologists, archaeologists' denial of Indigenous links to the land prior to 12,000 years ago has cleaved First Peoples' links to their homelands and created them as recent immigrants to the Americas. Yet in many oral traditions, Indigenous people say that they have been here forever. Links to ancestors' lands, identities, and histories are essential to all people, to their health, healing, and well-being. For people who have survived attempted genocide, erasure of their histories, denial of their links to the lands, and forced assimilation, it is vital to their health and well-being to reclaim their histories and links to the land. Reclaiming history is a path of revivance and healing a detour off a colonial road to extinction, a journey from a painful past to a future of growth and renewal. Knowing and discussing links to land across time and space, family identity and culture are fundamental human rights. Archeologists have created many stories regarding the indigenous past of the Americas. They claim the so-called Clovis people were the first people to enter the Western hemisphere walking across the Bering Land area around 12,000 years ago. American archeologists often discuss first people of the Western hemisphere as Asians from Asia. I like to remind archeologists that that is racist and that Asia never existed or Asians as a distinct cultural group 12,000 years ago. Modern cultural identities are a much more recent phenomena. Archaeologists discuss the first people of the Western Hemisphere as the Clovis people. However, the only place a pan-hemispheric cultural group, the so-called Clovis people, ever existed was in the wildest imagination of the archaeological mind. The first people and their descendants are indigenous to the continents of the Western Hemisphere and have been so for thousands of years. The Western Hemisphere is where their cultures, identities, and lifeways were born. This is where they are from. All Indigenous people have their own histories and stories to tell. Their stories are literal and metaphorical and meant to be woven through minds and hearts across time as listeners grow into understandings of all our relations and our place among them. To summarize my research, I sought to gain an understanding of oral traditions, archaeological evidence, and the environmental possibilities of pre-12,000 year before present Pleistocene archaeological sites and thus human habitations of the Western Hemisphere. What I have found through my research is that there are literally hundreds of pre-Clovis or pre-11 to 12,000 year old archaeological sites in both North and South America and evidence of mammalian migrations between the Western and Eastern Hemisphere across millions of years. In research, there are many forms of supporting evidence in every area. When we are seeking answers to questions, it is important to consider all forms of evidence and to weave a story based on a holistic view and practice. These are maps from my recent book, The Indigenous Paleolithic of the Western Hemisphere. This is just a sample 
of sites uh, that predate 12,000 years before present in both North and South America. When I began my re research and did my dissertation, I built a database of over 500 sites. I now know of over 4,000. So this is uh, the Western Hemisphere. This is North America 21,000 years ago. And up until at least 11,000 years ago, the land was covered in ice. This was not a time for uh, viable migrations of either humans or mammals. Prior to 20,000 years ago, and, and there are maps for back to 2 million years ago, we know that the Northern Hemisphere and North America were ice-free and actually, there are reports of subtropical forests. This is a viable landscape for the migration of mammals and humans across the connected land masses. What does Northern Asia look like 2 million years ago? There are numerous early hominid sites in Northern Asia. So we know that early hominids walked from Africa to Asia over 14,000 kilometers earlier than 2 million years ago and were well established in Northern Asia. So that begs the question, would they have sat there for over 2 million years and not followed the mammals migrating between the continents? Not likely. What are some of those mammals that we know migrated? Well, there are numerous species we know from paleontology that originated in North America. And to get to the Eastern Hemisphere, they had to cross a land bridge. So this is a picture of the earliest dawn horse, just one of the many mammals that migrated from the Western Hemisphere to the Eastern Hemisphere millions of years ago. So what in this picture is vaguely Canadian? Look in the sky. Those are Canadian geese. These are camelids. Camelids arose in the Americas. This is a drawing from a Camelid find 3.5 million years ago on Ellesmere Island. Camels cannot fly like those geese, so of course they had to have a viable land route to reach the Eastern Hemisphere. Another one of our four-legged relations that made that journey was the saber-toothed cat. The basal species of saber-toothed cat is known from an area of Florida and originated at least 5 million years ago. Saber-toothed cats likely followed horses, camelids, and anything else they wanted to eat, migrating between the Eastern and Western hemispheres. What are a few of these archeology span sites? There are many, many archeological sites, very well dated uh, prior to 12,000 years. So the top one is the Topper site in Georgia. This is where Alan Goodyear uh, has dated tools prior to Clovis as early as 50,000 years before present. Uh, Douglas Siam, a graduate student, did a monstrous dissertation on useware analysis of those tools, and he did argue successfully that those tools were used for cutting grasses and different foods. The bottom site is the Cactus Hill site. Now, the Maccabees said that they uh, spent more time and money defending their dates and uh, conducting new tests than they ever imagined, but they're certain that the dates earlier than 14,000 years have been well established. However, if they had to do it all again, they might not dig so deep. What does this relate to? This relates to the extreme violence in archaeology against archaeologists who reported earlier than 12,000 year ago sites. This area of archaeology was so violent that it was called an area of academic suicide. So people were highly discouraged from discussing or publishing on sites that dated to earlier than 12,000 years. In a recent interview on the White Sands site, um, Thomas Stafford said that archaeologists regularly sent him materials to date and told them not to date earlier than 13,000 years before present. That's not archaeology, that's scientific colonization. This is a picture of me, and here what I'm doing is I'm collecting a piece of eroding mammoth bone from the cliff face at the Lacina site. The Lacina site is in southwest Nebraska. It dates to 22,000 years before present. There were field schools and archaeological excavations here for uh, 11 years. And uh, this site is well established, dates of 22,000 years. And at the time, it was only about 500 miles south of uh, the southern part of the glacier. 
Number one on this map is the Lucina site. And as you can see, there's a number of other sites around it. These sites all date within the same time frame, between 14,000 and 22,000 years before present. All have similar technologies of uh, mammoth bone being broken by humans, and some of them have stone tools. So we know this isn't an anomaly and the dates aren't wrong. We have a regional area supporting humans being in this area way longer than 12,000 years. This is a berm along a highway that was constructed in Southern California. This is the Soretti Mastodon site. This was a very short <clears throat> stretch of highway, but when connecting Highway 15 and Highway 5 that both run north to south, they found over 114 sites at this uh, during those excavations. On the left, you can see here's a piece of mammoth bone. There's a nice um, curvature on the top of that bone where one of these boulders was used to break open that mammoth bone over 130,000 years ago. This is a map of the area. So the, the uh, Soretti site is number one. And the rest of these sites date between 50,000 and 200,000 years. So once again, we have a regional area. Just south of here in central Mexico around a reservoir, there are five more sites that date to as old as 200,000 years. So we can see that the um, southwestern area of the Western Hemisphere has signs of very early human presence. So um, to complete my research journey, I traveled a road through my own connections to the land and the impacts of cleaved and disrupted connections to place and past. I came to understand that political and social disparities, including high rates of suicide among indigenous populations are intimately tied to historical, anthropological, and archeological knowledge production of dehumanization and erasure. I walked paths of immense loss justified through archeological discussions denying the civility, intellect, humanity, and heartbeat of indigenous nations. Discourses on the histories of indigenous people in the Western hemisphere historically framed in Eurocentric archeology span are more a product of powerful ideologies based in a colonial past than they are of the known archeological record. The historically embedded boundary of recent post late glacial maximum timeframes for first migrations to the Western hemisphere is not simply based on archeological record, but it is a political construct maintaining colonial power and control over indigenous heritage, material remains and history. I agree with Vine Deloria Jr. And he, to quote him, he said, unless and until Indians are in some way connected with world history as early people, we will never be accorded full humanity. I worked in CRM in both the United States and Canada prior to grad school full time for five years. It was very evident that CR firms in Canada do not dig beneath glacial till as they assume people were not present prior to the last glacial maximum. And when artifacts are found within or beneath glacial till, they are ignored or excused. We know that people were in the Americas prior to the last glacial maximum. So I encourage archeologists to gain an understanding of oral traditions and of the archeological evidence of indigenous people on the land prior to 12,000 years before present. After all, this is what we are supposed to be doing. We study the human past, all of the human past. We are not required to stop at a certain time frame in any given area of the world. Yet this has been and continues to be the embedded standard in American and Canadian archaeology, and that is an unethical and violent practice that erases Indigenous histories. If you want more information on this data, this is a picture of my book, The Indigenous Paleolithic of the Western Hemisphere. There is a lot of evidence and a lot of data in that book for anyone seeking to understand or to teach about the true history of Indigenous people of the Americas.